I think what I remember most about films is the people that I work with rather than the film itself. Having a, a need to prove something to him other than I wanted him to be proud of me. When we talk about some of the most iconic actors of the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the Hollywood household name Sam Elliott would pop up in the hearts of many. Taking on some of the juiciest roles of his time, Sam Elliott has managed to keep the public entertained for over five decades. However, the tragic story of this tall and dashing icon with an outstanding voice would leave you in tears. Especially now that he approaches 80, the dark shadows over his life remain outstanding. Wondering what has happened to your favorite cowboy of old times? From his early life to unraveling even the darkest aspects of Sam Elliott's journey, let's embark on a journey that reveals it all. Sam Elliott's personal life and marriage. Sam Elliott can be said to have had a promising start to what would become a tragic journey in life. He was born to extraordinary parents on August 9, 1944, in Sacramento, California. Taken as Samuel Park Elliott, the young soon-to-be star spent his growing years in Oregon, where he loved exploring the outdoors and watching movies, which inspired his decision to become an actor from a very young age. Henry Nelson Elliot's father was a government staff worker for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. At the same time, his mother, Glenn M. Nay Sparks, was a high school teacher and a fitness instructor who, in her high school days, blossomed as a diving champion for Texas State. Amazingly, both of Sam Elliott's parents were from El Paso in Texas, giving him a deep Texan root so that you could trace his lineage to a well-known surgeon ancestor in history who served in the Great Battle of Jacinto. Together, they both provided Elliott with the first inspiring environment he needed to develop within him, the firm and dogged nature for which he is known throughout his challenge-filled life. After his biological parents, the next place where Sam Elliott found solitude, love, and support was with his wife, Catherine Ross, who was also a well-known actress in her time. Guided by the profound and enduring love they shared, they got married in 1984 and have remained a powerful support system to each other since then. At the time of their wedding, Catherine Ross was marrying for the fifth time, which was indicative of her tragic experiences in love but this was no hindrance to their blossoming love, which has now endured for decades, triumphing over the many mighty challenges that came with time. Their union was blessed with a lovely daughter named Chloe, who became a notable star in music and is considered a music icon in Malibu, California, upholding her family's legacy in the entertainment industry. Sam Elliott's residences and personal connections, showcasing the benefits of working together, Catherine Ross and Sam Elliott boast magnificent properties. Erecting their home in a beautiful seaside range in Malibu, California, in the 1970s, the couple has had a beautiful settlement ever since. The house in question holds great significance as a place of immense tranquility and peace, allowing the family to enjoy the beauty of the California coast in a united front. Besides this particular property, the family also owns a magnificent structure in Willamette Valley in Oregon, where they can take in the refreshing beauty of the Pacific Northwest. Also, collaborating as a family, Sam Elliott reclaimed ownership of his childhood home in Northeast Portland, where he had grown. He acquired the property after his mother sadly passed on in 2012, which was one of the saddest years of his life. Sam Elliott's acquiring the house shows how much he treasures family, his connection with loved ones, and his roots. And the building here is a symbol of the loving family he had, which would forever remain in his heart. Catherine Ross's support for her husband showcases her remarkable love for nature, beauty, tranquility, and family. Sam Elliott's Early Life and Education Sam Elliott tried his best to pursue a decent education as a child despite his dreams of becoming a movie star. Though he was born in California, Sam Elliott's family had relocated from California to Northeast Portland when he was only 13 years old. He spent the rest of his teenage years attending and graduating from David Douglas High School in 1962. 
This major relocation, alongside the many experiences in Northeast Portland, shaped the Sam Elliott we know today in character and precepts. It also curved the path that eventually led to Sam Elliott's blossoming career in acting. When Sam Elliott was done with high school, he moved on to pursue a college degree, with his interest fixated on English and psychology. However, these educational exploits lasted only briefly, as Sam Elliott eventually dropped out after two terms. However, this was not the end of his academic exploits, as he continued his pursuit of a degree at Clark College, located near Vancouver in Washington. Here, Elliott was able to complete a two-year program without any misfortune. Indeed, his going to Clark College was divinely orchestrated, as this was all the spark he needed to push towards his goal of becoming an actor. Graduating in 1965, Sam Elliott did not stop there, but returned to the University of Oregon for another degree. He eventually took pleasure in the Sigma Alpha Epsilon fraternity, which further spiced up his college experience. However, like he wasn't destined to have a college degree from the University of Oregon, Sam Elliott encountered an unpleasant situation here again, which led to his dropping out for the second time. This time around, the unpleasant situation tragically involved the death of Sam Elliott's very own father, who died of a heart attack in the late 1960s at the age of 54. Sam Elliott was only 18 years old when his father died, and sadly, the relationship of Sam Elliott with his father had not been a very smooth one before his death. This was not because they lacked love for each other, but because they disagreed on what they believed was best for Sam Elliott. While Sam Elliott believed that he would do well in life as an actor, his father thought differently, preferring that his son would instead pursue a decent degree in college and get a conventional job afterward as he did. But instead of his father's opinion dissuading him, it only said that more fuel to Sam Elliott's already existing passion to make it big as an actor. He wanted to prove his father wrong and so found it quite painful that his father never lived to see the success he would later become. Expressing the complicated nature of the situation, he stated that his father had died thinking that he was heading the wrong path, which was quite unfortunate. Over time, Elliot has also shown great admiration for his dad, saying that he was a realist with a strong work ethic, which he passed on to Sam Elliot and shaped his very core. Here, one of his lessons to Elliot was that he should always do a little more than is expected of him. Elliot agrees that his father's upbringing significantly influences his life and overall career success, saying he thanks his father daily for it. During his time at Clark College, he took part in a stage production of Guys and Dolls playing a significant role as Big Jewel, which enabled him to display his skills to the fullest. This action not only awakened the sleeping star inside of the iconic Sam Elliott, but also gave him a little exposure, which brought about some outside coverage. A significant part of this external encouragement came from the Vancouver Columbian newspaper, which advised that he should consider working as a professional actor. Interestingly, Sam Elliott had taken this advice very seriously. For him, this was a defining moment in pursuing his career. Challenges and Determination in Los Angeles After losing his dad in the 1960s, Sam Elliott had to take a pivotal step towards achieving his dreams. This involved relocating to Los Angeles, where he hoped to succeed in Hollywood. When Elliott arrived in Los Angeles, he wasted no time to venture into acting classes. He auditioned for numerous roles as he honed his skills, awaiting a big break. He was not a lazy man, but ensured that he did whatever it took to keep his head above water. While awaiting his big break, he supported himself by working in the construction industry. Following this, he was also in the California Air National Guard's 146 Airlift Wing, also referred to as the Hollywood Guard Station, located at the Van Nuys Airport, before it eventually relocated to the Channel Islands Air National Guard Station. Following this, Elliot was able to land himself minor roles that allowed him the opportunity to appear in television shows and films. Through these minor roles, Sam Elliot displayed his unique talents, setting the tone for his upcoming victories. 
At this point, it was clear that Sam Elliott was here to stay and that he would be a huge success and a prolific figure in the industry as he had all that was required to make it big. Sam Elliott, Early Career Milestones On his big journey towards his dreams, Sam Elliott earned his first television credit in 1969 when he landed the role of D.A. Kenyon in an episode of Judd for the Defense, a popular TV series. The episode that brought Sam Elliott to the screen was titled The Crystal Maze. It kick-started a journey that would not end anytime soon as far as the world of television and film was concerned. Launched into the field of acting by this giant stride, the late 1960s and early 1970s saw Samuel Elliott gradually becoming established as a Hollywood actor in the same year, where he was featured in Jude for the Defense. Elliott was able to land himself an appearance role in another TV series named Lancer. Here, he brought the character Renlo to life in the Deathbait episode. In 1970 and 1971, he was featured in two more episodes of the TV series Lancer, which was a good sign of progress toward his goals. In 1969, had another mind-blowing opportunity to appear in the movie titled Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. And while this was a remarkable feat for him, he had no idea that this would become one of the most memorable moments for him in cinematic history. In the movie, he took on the role of a card player who enjoyed observing the remarkable skills of the Sundance Kid as he shot in the opening scene. For many, Sam Elliott was introduced to the big screens, where he was destined to become an icon. Career Development and Recognition Between 1970 and 1971, Sam Elliott was still warming up to his acting career. Still, the progress continued as he was featured as Douglas Wood in a television series making rounds at that time titled Mission Impossible. This time, he appeared in numerous episodes throughout the series, with his versatile talents becoming even more known and appreciated. This progressiveness continued until 1972, when he had another significant break in a series of Falstaff beer commercials, where he took on the character of a cowboy walker, further strengthening his feet in the entertainment industry. The year 1975 also gave him more victories, with him taking on a lead role as Charles Wood in a bubbling movie titled I Will Fight No More Forever. In the burst of creativity, the movie was an intriguing recreation of the story of Chief Joseph, resisting the U.S. government's decision to remove his Nez Perce Indian tribe from their home to an Idaho reservation. With this role, Sam Elliott was already beginning to taste the success his father had not dared to believe was possible. But this was just the beginning. For Sam Elliott, these were his busy years as opportunities continued rolling between 1976 and 1977. Things got even more interesting when Sam Elliott landed another role in the Once an Eagle miniseries where he acted as Sam Damon, Together with other casts, which included Amy Irving, Kim Hunter, Clue Gulliger, and Melanie Griffith, Sam Elliott was able to give life to the Anton Mayer novel, which bears the same name, standing as the main character, which was another remarkable achievement for the young star. However, the major breakthrough that launched him into stardom came with the movie Lifeguard, where he featured prominently as Rick Carlson. As a summer hit, it revolves around the life of a lifeguard who seems to be in a reflective phase of his life where he begins to reevaluate his life's choices and actions, thus birthing new perspectives about life that draw in the audience. Of course, this lifeguard role was played by Sam Elliott, and it was the perfect break he needed to launch him into the view of both fans and critics. However, while the movie succeeded overall, some still could have found it more impressive. According to Variety, which is a significant publication in the entertainment industry, the movie was unsatisfying and unfitting for Sam Elliott, whose rugged and charismatic appearance contrasted greatly with the lifeguard, who was described as a more passive reactor to life rather than someone who charted the course of his life. 
Despite these views from some critics, however, Sam Elliott's featuring in Once an Eagle and Lifeguard marked a huge breakthrough in his career, leaving a solid impression on many. Diverse Roles and Recognition As Sam Elliott's career continued to blossom, causing him to gain more recognition, more significant roles began to come his way. In 1977, he was featured in the miniseries Aspen, where he took the character of Tom Keating. In 1981, Elliot moved on to apply his flexible skills to the role of an abusive husband and wife killer in the miniseries Murder in Texas. It was intriguing to see him work with Farrah Fawcett alongside Catherine Rose, who would be his future wife. In the same year, he was found working on Death in California with Cheryl Ladd, a co-star in the industry. Moving down from this time to 1985, we see Sam Elliott taking on more adventurous roles. During this period, he also engaged in a heartwarming collaboration with Tom Selleck, who featured with him in beautiful projects such as the miniseries adaptation of Louis L'Amour's The Sackets in 1979 and The Shadows Riders in 1982. The I-985 film Mask was also complete with Elliott, who landed a supporting role in it. Following this, the Christmas film titled Prancer of 1989 also provided him another opportunity to charm his way into the hearts of fans as he portrayed the character of a strict father filled with genuine care deep down. Besides the significant roles he played, Sam Elliott was also offered numerous TV appearances where he played guest roles in big shows like Filoni Squad, Gun Smoke, and Hawaii Five. He also had the opportunity to appear in the popular title Buffalo Girls in 1995, where he played Wild Bill Hickok. In the movie titled Gone to Texas, produced in 1986 based on Sam Houston's biography, Elliot also shown dramatizing Houston's transformation from being a skillful fighter to a prominent political leader, detailing the period where he led Texas as governor, his returning to Cherokee Nation friends, and he's been instrumental to the celebration of Texas from Mexico's control in 1836. After this role, Elliot moved on to the movie Roadhouse, produced in 1989. Here, he effectively played the role of Wade Garrett, working with Patrick Swayze, whose character, Garrett, was a bouncer, mentor, and friend. In 1991, the world witnessed one of the sweetest collaborations between Sam Elliott and his wife, Catherine Rose. Both starred in the movie adaptation of Louis L'Amour's novel, Conagher. Having versatile talents that fit into many roles, Elliot soon took the character of Brigadier General John Buford in the historical drama titled Gettysburg. After playing this, Elliot also took up the role of Virgil Earp in the film titled Tombstone. Continued success in film and television. Indeed, for Sam Elliott, success in Hollywood was continuous. Thus, even after establishing himself in the industry for about three decades, retiring was still not part of the bargain. In 1998, he took on the role of the stranger narrator in The Big Lebowski. Following this co-starred in the 2002 film We Are Strangers. The film was an adaptation of We Were Once Soldiers, and Young, acting in the character of Command Sergeant Major Basil L. Plumbly. Subsequently, domestic on the role of General Thaddeus Ross in Hulk, a 2003 action film. Clearly, Sam Elliott was advancing in his career and could be called an experienced actor with remarkable talents. The year 2005 was another fantastic year for Sam Elliott, as he appeared in Thank You for Smoking, acting as a former Marlboro Man advertisement cowboy with protracted cancer. The following year, he blended his remarkable voice with the character of Ben the Cow in Barnyard, a notable animated film. Elliot's voice had not only given life to the animation, but also stood as a testament to Elliot's multiple giftings. In 2007, Elliot made further strides in his career by appearing in Ghost Rider, displaying outstanding skills as he worked side by side with Nicolas Cage. The same year also saw Elliot featured in The Golden Compass. 
This fantasy movie dramatizes Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials trilogy. Here, he dramatizes the persona of Lee Scoresby, working side by side with iconic personalities like Nicole Kidman, Christopher Lee, and Daniel Craig. In 2009, Elliot continued to blossom in his career with a role in the air, portraying the chief pilot of American Airlines. At the same time, Elliot's appearance in Parks and Recreation marked his further success down the path. Voiceover Career and Industry Impact Besides his success in his many appearances on the big screens, Sam Elliott, known for his versatile talents, had also invested his time and effort into being a well-recognized voice actor in the industry. He soon lent his voice to numerous commercials and advertising campaigns. He applied his voice to well-known brands such as IBM, Kenny Drugs Union Pacific, and Dodge. Elliott succeeded in giving his voice to sports events, like his narration of the introduction for Pittsburgh Steelers and Green Bay Packers Super Bowl XLV, which was staged at the Cowboy Stadium in Arlington, Texas. In this line, he made progress in putting his voice talent into animated movies like Marmaduke in 2010. Here, Elliott stood as the voice behind Buster, also known as Chupadogra, providing the unique and distinctive voice needed to portray the character of Buster in the best way possible. During these times, however, he never abandoned acting. Still, he took notable roles in movies like The Company You Keep and Draft Day. 2014 was a busy year for Elliot, as he was featured in projects like the romance film I Will See You in My Dreams and the independent movie Digging for Fire. In 2015, Sam Elliott achieved one of his most incredible English career milestones when he was chosen for the Critics' Choice Television Award for the Best Performer in a Drama for his character in the FX Network show, titled Justified. Within this same year, he appeared in the Netflix series The Ranch. Another significant TV appearance featured Sam Elliott, including Ashton Kutcher and Danny Masterson, in an intertwine of excellent skills. During this time, he also had a recurring role in a second season of Netflix's Grace and Frankie, acting as the character Phil Milstein. Further strengthening his voice acting, Sam Elliott also gave his commanding voice to the character Butch, in the animated movie titled The Good Dinosaur, created in 2015. Following this, 2017 was a pivotal year for his career as he starred in a hit movie titled The Hero, known to have made rounds shortly after its release. Here, Elliot had played Lee Hayden, an icon in the West, who, because of his age, had gone past his glory days, which were left behind him. Elliot had received love from critics and fans because of this TV appearance, wherein his talents were praised as perfect for the role. Elliot Recent Years The rest of Sam Elliot's days were marked by many cheers and awards, which he remarkably earned. The most exciting part of Elliot's success is that he remains willing to share his secret of success with the public. In an interview, he explains how he chooses his roles, which was a major determining factor in his success. He said he had never taken on a project for the money. Though this factor was partially ruled out, he ensured he could turn down setting roles that did not match his passion and desires. When taking feedback and opinions from outsiders, he also states that emotional connections to the project are the ultimate deciding factor. It is important to note that while he made excellent use of his voice acting skills for voiceover jobs in the later part of his career, Sam Elliott did not give up on his appearance on the big screens, as you later featured in The Man Who Killed Hitler and Then the Bigfoot. Following this, in 2018, the public was happy to see him take the role of Bobby Maine in Esther is Born, being the half-brother of the lead character. Recently, the animated series titled Family Guy, released in 2020, also featured Sam Elliott's voice as the new mayor of Quahog. This showcases his prominent presence, which has proven to endure in Hollywood and the entertainment industry. Even as Sam Elliott turns 80, the man has not declared his retirement from the big screens. 
Hence, we can only watch the matured champ as he traverses through the rest of his journey as an iconic star. What do you think of Sam Elliott's experiences? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below.